What's up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and videos are back to 1080p 50fps again because in 4K I was having problems. Today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Hikon OS based on Android 11 and this is the version 4.0. The build name is Ephemeral and here it is the 12th July 2021 build. As you can see the gapps is included over here in the ROM file itself and the ROM file size is about 1.7 or 1.8 GB and you can get all the links from the description box below. If you don't know how to flash the ROM, check out the card or the description again. And here, this ROM is based on OS's vendor for the Redmi K20 Pro. I switched to this particular Hikon OS from the Spark OS and I gotta say, the experience is so much better because in the Spark OS, I was having so many problems while like daily driving, even while scrolling through the app drawer and stuff like that, I was having so many stutters. But here, let me tell you, those problems does not exist at all. Like while daily driving, I never faced any kind of hiccups or stutters in this particular ROM and the experience is way, way better. In the about section, this is how it looks like. Let me actually reduce the brightness a bit. We have this Hikon OS up top and the Android version is 11 of course and the Hikon OS version is 4.0 ephemeral official build and the maintainer's name is Anurag Bhomik and we have the security patch of latest July 5th, 2021. So we are getting latest security patch here and the stock kernel here is the Soviet star kernel and here is the build number you can see from the bottom again 11th July 2021 build. This is how the system panel looks like we have the system updated and I think you can check for updates whenever there is a new update but right now it shows update check failed and we have the gestures as well. Here we get the power menu controls and there we have also the advanced reboot and let me show you this is how the power menu looks like. If you tap on advanced you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here of course. Here we have the quick torch that is the quickly press the power button to toggle torch. Let me go back we have the swipe quick screenshot and here we also have the scrolling feature but for that you have to scroll to the right then you get the scrolling option. That's how it is but we also have the editing option and stuff for the screenshots. No issues with that. In the system navigation gestures we have these gesture navigation or the full screen gestures. If you go into the settings we have the gesture bar length customization but as of now no thickness customization on this build and we have the edge music gesture as well. Then we have dead zone and stuff. Let me go back. We have the two button and three button navigation as well. If you want to go old school with the navigation stuff and we have the quickly open camera by double pressing the power button and stuff. So yeah, a lot of things are there in the system gestures and in the front camera settings, we get the front camera sound effects. These are the sound effects that you will get. And we also have the camera calibration as well. So motor calibration is there. If your camera is stuck or something, you can calibrate the camera with the settings. And we have the camera LED enabling or disabling option. Front camera raise dialog is also there. You can enable it. The stock keyboard here is Gboard because this build of course includes the G apps. And this is how the settings panel looks like. By the way, I'll show you those later on, but let me show you the stock launcher now. So you are getting basically the pixel launcher by default over here to the left you are getting the Google's discover page and you can actually disable the suggestions in the app drawer if you want to but there is no double tap to sleep over here as you can see in the home screen settings if I go into it we do not have any double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but we do have the double tap to sleep in the status bar no issues with that typical pixel launcher and you can swipe down anywhere in the home screen to get to the quick settings panel swiping up gets you to the app drawer and as you can see widgets are working super fine over here no issues with that. So yeah, overall experience with the stock launcher is very fluid. Talking about the wallpaper over here, as you can see, this is the wallpaper that I'm using. That is from this Hikon wallpaper. This is the app that you get. This is a basically a wallpaper app and you can download any wallpapers from here. Yes, you need internet to actually get these wallpapers, I guess. And as you can see, plethora of Hikon OS wallpapers are there. These wallpapers do look really, really amazing in my opinion, as you are noticing. So yeah, you are getting a lot of Hikon OS wallpapers and the like experience with the wallpaper should be good enough and there are multiple like colorful wallpapers that you will use i guess so yeah a lot of high conways wallpapers are there and you can definitely use that app as your stock wallpaper now talking about the camera experience over here let me actually show you this is the camera that you will get this is a very basic old kind of google camera that is present by default over here not even gonna show you like more features of it because this is a very basic camera that is present and here I have installed the ANX camera because of that reason and here with that I have the videos and stuff everything is working also I have the lenses working super fine if you want to install ANX camera on this particular ROM check out the card right there yes you do need to flash magic if you want to install ANX camera over here this is the version 185R ANX camera I'm using 
Also the Google camera PX Unix version is working fine with night sight and stuff and if you're wondering if the front camera is working or not and as you can see the front camera is working super fine no issues whatsoever with that so front camera is not a problem on, on this particular ROM. By the way this is how the recent panel looks like and we have the screenshot then select option over here and if you go all the way to the left we have this clear all option and of course you can go to the apps info or split screen or stuff like that from the recent panel. Now talking about the quick settings panel this is how it looks like and yes I have customized the accent color that's why it looks like this and you can edit and add multiple toggles from here as you can see plethora of quick toggles that you can add. So I have already added a couple of toggles like the battery saver, the dark theme and we also have the Android 11 screen recorder as well. With that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. Then we have hotspot, do not disturb, data saver and always on display you can enable or disable and FPS info also appears on the top left as you are noticing. So no issues with the FPS info. We also have the sound toggle over here and if you tap and hold on it you will get the volume panel just like this and as you can see you can expand the volume panel over here. Heads up you can disable or enable night light option is also there. DC dimming you can turn it on if you want to and the high brightness mode is there. If you enable it the display's brightness will go too much bright. This is actually for outdoor usage so definitely this is gonna help if you are someone who uses your device a lot more in outdoors. There is also the Moto Audio and if you tap and hold on it as you can see it opens the Moto Audio control panel I guess and if you press continue as you can see there are a lot more options you can go to edit and you can like actually edit the audio over here like however you want to. So yeah lot of options are there I usually put it to smart audio and with the Moto Audio the sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is amazing no issues that I have had. Also in the quick settings panel we have this brightness slider you can put it to auto brightness or something from here. Then we have the cellular networks name on the bottom left and the top right. Then we have how long the battery will last and then we have the actual time what's right now and the phone status if it is muted it will show phone muted and the Wi-Fi usage shows up over here on the top left or the data usage as you can see when the quick setting panel is not expanded. These are very cool features to like actually see and in the settings panel let me show you we have the Hikon hub. If you go into it, we have the theme section. First, let me go into the themes. We have the dark theme. As you can see, you can change the color bucket. Let me go back. We have the clock styles. And from here, let me actually show you. We do have the Android 12's clock over here. Then we have the Android S DP3 and stuff. And let me show you with the Android 12 S. Let me show you how the clock looks. So as you can see, this is how the clock looks in the lock screen. Yes, it definitely looks beautiful in my opinion. I'm just double tapping on the screen. It doesn't do anything. So I have to press the power button and that will make the display this much bright. But then again, I have to press the finger bit scanner once. But the screen sometimes in the lock screen is too much dim. If you're noticing, once I press the finger bit scanner, then only it will become like that much bright where I left it. So yeah, that's how it is. This is the experience I'm getting over here. So a reboot sometimes fixes it but then again with time and usage it becomes like this again. So yeah this problem is there like the brightness in the always on display is quite dim unless and until you touch the fingerbit scanner. So this I have experienced in the lock screen the clock actually looks good but I can't get to see it because most of the time my lock screen or my always on display is just too dim to actually see it. So that's how it is as you can see I have to manually actually double tap over there but then again it goes this much dim. So yeah that's how it is but the fingerprint scanner is actually working fine again. The brightness as you can see is to the fullest but the screen brightness just look at this how much dim it is. So this brightness issue is there but yeah that's fine I have to just like increase or decrease it depending on how it is whenever unlocking the device. So yeah for that I had to get used to with this ROM for some times but maybe they will fix it in the future updates. And we have the headline and body fonts then we have the icon shapes then the series bar icon styles and stuff. So yeah a lot of options are there and we have the G visual mod as well. We have the nav bar colors and the rounded corners. I have been using it with the medium that's why you are seeing these rounded corners. Status bar height you can change it as well. Let me go back from here. We have the volume panel changing option. Then we have AOSP compact and all other options. We have this P404 or project 404 shape shift volume panel as well. If you are into that custom header image, you can change it. And the quick setting toggle style, I have changed it to the dual tone circle. 
you can also change it to oxygenize or something if you want to then we have the quick setting tile disco new tint style is there as well in the status bar we have the traffic indicators old mobile data type icon then the vault view wi-fi both icons are there now in the system icons we have the headset bluetooth etc icons over here then we have the data disabled icon then the roaming indicator status bar brightness control is also there so if you slide a finger on the status bar as you can see that increases or decreases the brightness so this feature is very handy for me it actually works fine no issues with that but yes overall in the always on display there are some brightness issues in the quick setting panel we have the media player colored header icons and stuff also we have the status bar colored icons as you can see but i have disabled it because sometimes i can't see my important notifications over there on the corner so yeah that's how it is and we also have the buttons and here we have the weight device playback control etc and the column and row number customization is there in the like quick setting options let me go into the notification we have the notification sound if active and then reticker in the less boring heads up and also the normal heads up you can disable and in the lock screen we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar as well but sometimes the double tap to wake again is not working and we have the media art and stuff background blur is there in the lock screen and we have unlock with fingerprint when the screen is off but again no fingerprint unlock always or all the time so yeah force fingerprint option is missing from this rom if you're coming from ROS, I thought this is a good to know kind of feature that you won't get over here in this ROM. And always on display, you can actually schedule it from here as you can see and the always on display icons you can enable. And we have this edge lighting option. Yes, the edge lighting does appear over here. No issues with the edge lighting on this particular ROM. Let me go back and in the MISC settings, we have the pulse notification or the pulse visualizer and we have the gaming mode then the signature spoofing in the fod customization we have these fingerprint pressed color and we also have this fingerprint recognizing animation and of course you can change these animation to the cyberpunk mcladen etc so yeah a lot of our animations you are getting and also we have a lot of fingerprint scanner icons as you are noticing so these iron man spider man etc icons are there also we have the general fingerprint scanner icons but again, the fingerprint scanner appearing animation is not there. Where you get the MIUI or the OnePlus kind of animation, where how the fingerprint scanner appears, not when you touch it or something, you just lock the device, you get to see the animation, which is there in SparkOS is missing from here. Talking about the call quality, yes, no issues whatsoever with vault -E calling. It was working fine all the time. But again, in the stock dialer, you won't get the call recording option or such if you're looking for that. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. The animations definitely look cool in my opinion. And we have these kind of battery settings. And there we have the full battery usage, of course. The thermal profiles are there and you can like actually change the thermal profiles to default, benchmark, browser, camera, dialer, gaming, streaming, etc. So all those options are there, you can change them. And adaptive battery and stuff is there. Battery percentage you can enable from here. Smart charging is also there. The screen on time shows up over here. Then we have the design battery capacity, current battery capacity and the charging cycles as well. The battery temperature shows up on the bottom. So yeah, in my opinion, this is good that you are getting to see all of this information right in the battery settings. And I would say the fast charging is also working fine, no issues whatsoever. And also talking about the battery life, you can get about six hours of screen runtime because this is an OSS vendor based ROM. This is more focused toward the performance. So that's the reason why the battery life is may not be like more than seven to eight hours of screen runtime or something. But yeah, here you will get six to six and a half hours of screen on time easily on a daily usage. In the display settings, we have the custom display settings like the DCDiming high brightness mode you are getting at the top. Then we have the brightness level. Weirdly enough, the like animation appears below this option. So yeah, if you tap it, it doesn't do anything. In the brightness level, we can of course change the brightness and we have the dark theme customization. Then we have the nightlight adaptive or auto brightness. In the styles and wallpapers, we have this like styles option and if you tap on plus you can change the fonts then you can choose that particular icon and we have this choose color but it only shows one particular color over here which is very weird but you also don't get those in the customization settings like let me actually show you if you go into this icon hub and in the themes there is no option to change the accent colors so where is it you might be asking so in the display settings you have to go all the way to the bottom then we have these themes and if you go into the themes you will get the accent color picker so that's how you get the accent color picker over here. I know it is a little bit weird, but that's how it is in this ROM. Then we have the grid settings. We have up to this five by five grid. And in the clocks again, we have all these dot clocks, sneaky, and we have the divided lines. Then we have Octavi digital clock and stuff, Android S style clocks, shape shift clock, everything is there. Fluid clock, etc., are also there. Then we have colors. This is set to boosted by default. 
let me scroll down we have the lock screen customization here we have this always show time and info that is just always on display so the rebel tab to wake i just turned on from here i don't know why i did not enable it so yeah as you can see the rebel tab to wake i think you can see it i'm not really sure let me actually increase or decrease the brightness because again the brightness problem does exist so right now okay so the double tap to sleep in the lock screen right now is not working so as you can see the always on display still is buggy as you are noticing so yeah double tap to sleep and wake is working right now but if i change the brightness let me actually show you so i just change the brightness right now if i double tap to sleep it does not work i have to do it from the status bar yeah so right now it's working so i have to like really make it around over here so it does not work properly in my opinion the always on display still is buggy the display cutout you can actually change to punch hole cutout or something if you want it for some reason i don't know why you would do that but yeah enable blurs option is there and again the themes or the accent color option appears on the bottom in the display settings in the sound option we have these media call etc volume and all these animations appear over here and we have the vibrate for calls and we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option from here then we have the phone ringtone changing option of course and we have the in-call vibration you can have it on vibrate on connect call waiting or disconnect then we have the charging sound charging vibration touch sound touch vibration screenshot sound etc disabling option are there and we have the me sound enhancer from here you can enable it with the youth edition or something and with the youth edition the sound quality with the headphone jack is not a problem at all and also we get the moto audio so no issues with that and the presets you can also change from here and the hi-fi audio option is also there then we have the clear speaker option as well in the security settings this is how it looks like we have this animation again on top then if you go into the settings we have the lock screen timeout and stuff let me go back we have the fingerprint i just showed you the fingerprint scanner speed in the meantime so that's why i will go straight into the face unlock so currently let's just quickly set up the face unlock so setting up the face unlock is done let's just double tap over here and double tap to wake yes the device is wake even though you can't see it because of the brightness issue so i'll just swipe up and it pops out the front camera and it unlocks the brightness is still too low i have to actually increase it so right now as you can see swiping on the status bar doesn't do anything i have to slide the brightness slider then only it will become to the brightness where i left it i have to manually do it every time almost now the app locker is also there and the app locker is not buggy over here and it does not trigger without putting your fingerprint or something so no bugs at all in the app locker over here let me actually show you you can lock any particular app just by tapping on them as you can see so yeah app locker is working fine you can unlock them from here and we have the hiding notification options as well authenticate only once option is there then you can search for any particular app over here and lock them from here and let me actually show you the app locker is working perfectly fine this is how it looks like as you are noticing and we have this use pin option then the face data option and you can tap the fingerprint scanner of course and by the way the fingerprint scanner icon i'm using over here is the icon icon well that rhymed and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see that particular app unlocks super fine no issues whatsoever the app locker is working perfectly fine here not gonna show you the DRM info and safety net again because safety net is working for me and the DRM info should be L1 if your DRM certification is right now L1. I mean if you have not broken it permanently then only your DRM certification will be L1 over here. Now talking about performance I would say yes daily driving performance should be good enough. The RAM management is like just normal. Yes it sometimes boots out some apps from memory but most of the apps do stay in memory but here are the Android and Gigabyte score of this particular ROM. Also talking about Google Assistant, let me try it. Okay, Google. As you can see, Google Assistant is not a problem over here on this ROM. So no issues with Google Assistant voice trigger. So I feel the Hikon OS is a pretty good option. But again, they need to fix this always on display thing. The always on display brightness sometimes goes too much dim. Only a reboot fixes it for some time. But then again, the bug comes around. So that's how it is. I would say the Hikon OS is a good option for the Redmi K20 Pro but yes there are better options for the Redmi K20 Pro right now in my personal frank opinion. So thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet this is Tito from KD Index signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.